This is a very pretty track. I've managed to make it so these trains will automatically keep an eye on their own demand. And if they're not required, they'll send themselves back to the depot. Let's take a look and see how it's done. And welcome back to this series about rails, open computers, and other stuff sprinkled on top. Sprinkles. Okay, so we've spent the last few episodes working more on open computers, but in this episode, that is all going to come to make a really cool thing. In fact, this is probably going to be the first part of a multi-part piece where you mix the two together to make something that I don't think I've actually seen anybody else do. So, let's get started. So as you can see, we're here in a plains biome, and you can see I've already laid down a little bit of a track and a loop shape here, goes all the way down here into this tunnel, and it joins up with the track that was already running along here, which we weren't using, which heads straight into Waterview. But of course, we're going to make it go down this way now for what we're going to be doing here. And as you can see, this is a really good place to store pigs. Because there's pigs everywhere. And I thought, it would also be a really good place to store locomotives. But the first thing I thought we'd have to do is actually look at how to give a locomotive a destination. So in the past, we have used colours to determine where a locomotive is going. But I'm thinking I wanted to change a little bit because I've been playing around with some ideas and I can't get it to work the way I want. And I'll show you why. So if we go into here, this I'm holding here is a routing track, which we can place down here. We can grab some a golden ticket from here. And we give it a destination such as spawn. We will stick a, a locomotive on there, just make sure those switches are set they are. Cool. Send this on its way around. And you'll notice at the moment it has no name. But if we were to go into here, stick a destination in there, it won't do anything because it needs a redstone signal, that will always be helpful. We'll place it on there. Ground, and you'll now see it gets set to spawn, which is the destination, and you can look for that in your routing tracks. Uh, and if we wanted to change the destination again, we can go into here, skin, and we can set this to forest. Done. Once again, right click with the crowbar, take this guy out, we'll stick forest in there, and then it should change the destination. Rather cool, except for open computers won't interact with these. So, where's the final way of doing it? We'll probably start using server racks in the next episode, but for now it's just easy to show you how things work using a standard computer. Uh, and what I was thinking is we're going to put a transposer just on the top here. Probably actually facing that way. And now what we could do is if we stick our, let's get rid of this guy for a moment. If we stick our computer here, or our train there, we're going to here. I won't install it just at the moment because we don't, I'm just playing with it. Uh, our transposer should be available. So there it is there, one transposer. We'll go into Lua. Uh, we will need to grab a chest as well, actually. Chest. And we'll stick the trest there, we'll do for now. Uh, and when we'll go into here, we'll go component dot transposer transfer item from sides dot left. Is that right? So we placed it there. It's actually sides dot yeah, sides dot left. And we'll stick our spawn uh, and we'll stick the forest in there as well. Sides dot left to sides dot right, we want to go from slot one to slot one. Now each engine seems to have different setups, so of course the creative only has the single slot, which is this guy here. 
but of course in the Steam ones we'll have to change the coding a little bit so that it takes it out of the appropriate slot. But we take out of slot 1, put into slot 1, we'll take one item, and we do that, there is no inventory on the left. Okay, shall we try front and back? There you go, so you can see up the top there, it changed it to spawn. Now, what you'll find, of course, is that the, the ticket is still there. And of course, our code can take the item out of there and stick it back in the chest. Now, of course, if they were going at some speed, that may not work very quickly. So what I'm also thinking of doing is putting down a couple of blocks along here. I don't know why I took that out. Let's put that back. Uh, we will need to put a, a stop track in there, so let's go, is it a locking track? Locking track. And we'll stick this on there. Now, the big thing of course is we also need to give it a redstone signal to activate that, so we'll let the computer do that. So we'll put this here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write some, some actual code, and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so there's some basic code, and you can see in the background I've placed in some signaling just to give this a test. There's currently two trains going around. I've made it so that a variable slot chest is alternating over four different tickets. Uh, just for testing purposes, obviously this isn't going to be very useful. You can see all the code is there. The only thing I've done is I've had to make it check to see if the inventory is there. Because there's no event or any signal uh, which indicates, hey... A new inventory has appeared, you can now use it. So we have to sit there and wait. But otherwise, if it's there, so we just change all these to variables, and it's pretty quick. You watch this. Test. There's the first one going past. Sometimes they slow down a little bit. But as you can see, it's alternated between the four. Uh, if we were to put some more trains on here. Uh, preferably when there's not something else there. Um, we'll just flip that direction. And send it on its way. That should immediately get charcoal power, which it did. So it's pretty cool. Now we've got automatically inserting the destinations. I want to have it so that we've got a number of waiting, so that if we want to change how many we want it on the track, we can. So I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll run a... Oh. Okay, we won't go along there because that's kind of complex. So let's run this one more along. So there maybe. From there. All the way along here. And probably to about... Maybe two down. To there. And we'll set that to ear. Turn it off again. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use another, det another detector. Just any form of detector though. Because what I'm thinking of doing is the trains will come in here. So if we want them to wait, they'll come into here. Send them along here. But once they get to here, we're going to turn them off. So... I'm thinking, though, in order to keep them moving, uh, let's just run along here. Whoop, whoopsies. There's a hole there. Run that along there. Just about a large area to work in. Can I look at that and get that? So, what we're going to do is just run these along here, facing downwards. And of course, these are just any detectors, so any form of cut thing on them will push them, will, um, will trigger it. Uh, we don't need one there, probably. And yeah, probably don't need one there. Uh, and then what we'll do is down here, we're going to put in some controllers. Uh, signal controllers. Which we're going to set to do that, and we'll do that right along. And I'll also put some receivers along here and link each of these up 
So that one there, if there's something that's in there, will trigger this one. This one here, if nothing, uh, if something is sitting in there, will trigger that one. And all the way along here, hit that. So it goes that way. And we want it to go back into this track because, of course, what's going to happen is when these guys exit the depot, we want them to go back and be given a destination. Uh, there we go. And now what we'll do is we'll stick in some locking tracks on each of these. To there. And I might put one there as well. So what this will do is, of course, when the train rolls in, it'll go into here and it'll stop. And then when there's a free space, it'll move forward and move forward and move forward. But, of course, these guys are not going to have any power. We're going to set them all into uh, boarding mode, which will give them a slight push in the direction they're facing. So if we do this, they will all go this way. And now that we're all facing that way, what we're going to do is we're going to stick in uh, some stop tracks. Uh, so they are start, stop locomotive tracks, which we're going to put this into... Stick it there, it should have enough power to push itself around onto these guys, and then each one of these is responsible to make it back on. Stick one of those there. Now I believe it's red. For some reason in here it's red to turn it on. Uh, by default they will need a, a redstone signal. So we'll grab one of those and just stick it there. And that way of course this will be pushed forward. Uh, also we need another receiver. Oops. Receiver there with a locking track set. That way, uh, and we'll need to link that guy to there. And then, of course, what will happen is these will all push each other along until they hit here. Uh, in fact, I might change this to be something else, but they'll push each other along, and then they'll send themselves into here. Train will turn back on and head back into the track. On the other side, of course, we want to turn the train off, which is the green there. We need to give it a redstone signal. that and now we should be able to put let's just spike that for a moment face it that way the trains will come into here and they'll be able to queue themselves up now we may need to make this a little bit longer and maybe twist it around or something so that the there's enough room for all the trains to be in there but now of course if we grab ourselves a locomotive and we'll stick it over Okay. <laughs> Not sure what happened there. So we'll stick it here, and as you can see, the track in front of it turned off. Now I'm not sure why that turned off. Oh, I, I've done it the wrong way around. That's why. So currently, if there's a train sitting here, it'll turn off this track. We want it the other way around. And that's what I've done wrong. So let me just fix that, and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so we'll try this again. So we will stick that there. And as you can see, it gets pushed along. It'll get to the end, and it will stop. We place another one on the track. Just slowly see each of them going. It's a little bit laggy for some reason. I'm not probably entirely sure why. But you see it gets to the end, and now it will stop there because the track in front of the engine in front of it is currently taken. Do it again, and of course we could do multiple. We'll just follow each other along. And then I can last little So that's definitely more space saving than having tracks uh, which have each single locomotive in it. And it also lets us have a nice long queue of trains waiting to go on the track. So the other thing we'll need to do is possibly place in 
another signal set so we'll just put in a block signal there all the way along to probably here there so that should set that to green yes and then we can link that guy just place them there uh, can link that guy from there over to the receiver which just sits here And it should very send it on the way. No? Okay, I think I found the problem. It's because this lever here was sitting here, which was triggering the controller to send a red signal back. Uh, so what we're going to do, though, is let's refill these lot. And that should go. Awesome. Put another one in there. That also works. Cool. Okay, well that looks like it's working, which is awesome. So we can fill that up. And hopefully we will be able to put a whole bunch on there. Like that. And hopefully I've also been, I've spent a bit of time working on the signals here because there was a small problem. Uh, with this guy here and that guy there releasing at the same time. So I'll fix that. Uh, but uh, so we'll go put this into test. And now, of course, what should happen is it will release the trains that it needs to. Hello. How are you? Okay. So we've got the depot piece sorted. Uh, we haven't got anything that controls this piece of the track yet. But we also don't really know what the train is that is coming into the, the depot. Every time we run this, of course, it's changing the train's destination. Every time it runs past it, which we don't want to do. Because what happens if, say, this Waterview Passengers train, we want to keep going to Waterview Passengers location we don't want to come past here and change its destination especially if it's got a set of carriages on it because we're going to have to take those carriages off and they may have stuff on them so what we're going to, have to do is set up something to detect if there is actually a train already going for it now i have tried using the open computers to read the labels it doesn't work it just tells you that it's a track so we're going to have to track based on what we know about the train in order to work out whether it should be changed or whether we do it somewhere else or whether we just send it to the depot. One thing I have found is we can use routing detectors to do this. So if we go into here and we'll say take out probably I don't know one two three four five yeah five should be done. it should be good enough yeah I'll stick one not there not there. It's being difficult. There. Uh, and we actually want that facing down. In fact, let's grab the the wand. And we will dig out from there. Probably down to about... We need to have a bit of room under here so we can get around. Uh... Probably one more from there, and we'll just set that to nothing. Oh, let's just double check that's yeah, that should be fine. Set that to ear, and now goes for the room to move around. Uh, I will need a crowbar just so we can face this guy because the way these guys work is you give them a routing book and they will output a redstone signal to the side with this dot on it. Uh, so we need to face that down for what I'm planning on doing, and we'll just run five of these along. 
five of those. We will grab ourselves a little bit of dirt there, and we'll run a redstone line along here. Because we, if we use redstone, this guy here will output a signal. It'll make this one 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. So we can then use some for uh, fancy magic on our computer to work out the number. Now I did think about using Project Red. The problem is, if we use Project Red, so we'll take these out for a second, I'll show you what the issue there is. We can place down the yellow insulated wire there, and the white one there, and they won't connect. The problem is, if something's sitting there, for example, if we go and set this guy to be color equals black, any, and we stuck that in there, we'll grab one of our, we will grab a train, and we'll just stick it in front of this, you will see that it turns red, but the, it doesn't actually activate the insulated wire. Which means we have to use the red alloy wire. Which will then connect to the yellow. So if that doesn't work, and we'll face this guy back down. You'll see that it triggers this, it gets a power of 15, as shown by the top of the, the screen there. The next block down is in 14. So we could work out, okay, if it's currently got a signal of, let's say, 13 here, then we know that 15 minus 13, we know which color it is, because that's the color we've placed over here. And if you notice, when I put in the book here, I put black, any, we're looking for a black top, and any color bottom. So on the flip side, we could go across here, and do something similar with, now we're going to put, okay, so let's go down here. Uh, we are, we don't want to take out that right of that piece of rail, so let's just shift or contract one down. And then of course we can set that to zero as well and take out that piece, uh, <laughs> including all of our roots that we just placed. So that's fine. Let's put that back. It's not too hard to do. The good thing about this is it's also really simple to set up. But of course we're working over here, so we'll just take out this lot. Oops. Turn that off, and we can run the same thing along here. Actually, no, first we have to, we have to place down the routing detectors. Uh, like that, cool, got it. And just five of those along here. Now, of course, we can go up to 16 because there's 16 different colors, uh, but five should be enough for now because we've got, that should be quite a few colors. Oh, I actually missed a section. that one there and of course over here we could add in uh, instead of doing that we'll, we'll make it any black stick that into there and then this guy here should also be triggered uh, no because it's a what's the bottom oh, I see no at the bottom of this car of this train it's actually magenta so really this should be any Magenta. Take that out. Put one of those in there. And then of course that will trigger. It's pretty cool. Eh? But what I actually want to do is I want to grab it. So if we go into Project Red here, we'll just get rid of these. Move all this stuff up. I want to go in the order here because it makes a lot more sense to go the color they listed. So if we go white. Orange, magenta, light blue, yellow. So it's one, two, three, four, five. We've got one too many there. 
and we'll make it so the white is first and I'm just using it across the top here so we can indicate which one we're looking at it's orange magenta light blue and yellow and of course each one of our books will follow those colors uh, so we'll go back to our book here and we'll start off with any white and we'll stick that one in there and this one oops and this one here will be white any stick that into there and now if the cut if the bottom is white it'll trigger this one if the top is white it'll trigger this one and we'll just do that for all of these so give me a second okay put that into there okay that's everything pla uh, into the places now there is something you probably want to be aware of if you're going to do this yourself if we go into here and we look at the book it says that light blue is light blue no spacing or anything else in there but if we put that in there it actually tells us it's wrong uh, so uh, so go into here we click on here bring up the interface you'll see it's got a big red X note uh, next to it because it can't find the keyword light blue uh, so I've had a little fiddle around and I've worked out that it's actually light underscore blue so if you put that back into here we'll get rid of that guy and stick it into there and now it quite happily accepts it now, because it does mean that you have to make sure that you have unique colors for all the engines, but I think that should look quite nice anyway. Three went from zero to ten, and two went from a zero to fourteen. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use this to determine which side will be getting in the which one has the color, because of course what's actually going to happen is that this locomotive is going to travel along here it's going to trigger one of these and then it's going to turn off and then it's going to trigger this one here and then it's going to turn off and it's going to get to here now what i'm also thinking is we probably should know if the if the, the train's actually gone far enough past and we could do that with a detector uh now right there's two of course this is the standard detector rail from minecraft but we're going to use the railcraft one and we'll place it there. I'm going to hit it with a wrench. Not a downy line. A wrench. We'll face it uh, that way. And this way, it'll only ever trigger if it's going this way. If it, for some reason it's going backwards, it won't trigger it. And we'll just tr stick it on there. Does that trigger it? Not quite. Uh, let's just remove this guy from there then. Uh, face him. Actually, we'll take that guy off. Okay, well that was helpful. Uh, so that triggered a one. Cool. So redstone turned on. Okay. So we're going to assume that if the top one comes on, which is the one, then it's going to go on there. And what I'm going to do though is I'm going to write some code and I'll be back in a moment. Okay. So just a quick status update on the code. As you can see, we are now detecting the color and assigning a number. So the train that just went past is white yellow, and of course we've got yellow bottom, white top. And then of course we've got the magenta top and the white bottom, so that's awesome. Now, just to get, uh, so how this code works, it's not too difficult. Well, of course we've got to have our maximum that we're tracking. So if we look at where the IO is, it's one block away, which means all these red stones um, will trigger or that the white will trigger a 14 because uh, it will be 15 here so it'll output 15 there take one away to make it into there uh, I've got a bit of debugging here so we can determine what the signal so if we see a zero come back then it's the white color uh, one then it's orange so on uh, this is probably the most important function here and we'll, is what we're using to determine what the train is and it basically takes the bottom color plus the top color, or at least the numbers of them. It times is the bottom color by 10. Uh, so, of course, we have 10, 20, 30. And it adds the top color on. 
and then we add one on. Uh, that allows us to start every single train at one, rather than starting at zero. And we then you go into an input loop, and that's pretty much the code. Seems to do what it's after. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I am going to merge the test one script and the test two script together. So I'll be back in a sec. Tree farm forest, cool. Okay, it's releasing them. Charcoal. Here's the Christmas one. And hopefully the next one will recycle back to the beginning. All of you, cool. So that gives us our two all of you. That one should stay as all of you. Awesome. Okay. Well, it looks like it's working. Uh, may have to work on the timings a little bit, but let me just show you how and what's going on here. Uh, so down here, of course, what I've done is we originally had this redstone I/O sitting underneath the uh, the stop track here. Uh, what I've done is move it back a little bit, and I put a bit of project red in there. So it, that's what this line here is. It's all project red. Uh, allowing us to have different colors going through doing different things. So the light blue here is triggering the release. So that's doing what we previously had. If the train, if the system doesn't detect what it should be or doesn't have a destination, it'll use the white line here to trigger the switch motor to send it into the depot, the train into the depot. If we need to release a, another train from the depot, that's what this one here is doing. Uh, so the yellow comes down, it'll trigger into this AND gate along with the receiver, which says, hey, there's already something gone there. So both of these have to be set before it will let the, the depot exit out, which is just this one here. Uh, and of course at times it gets pretty busy along here, so sometimes it doesn't it does take a while for the depot to release the train uh, We've got this little one here, which is just ensuring that we don't have a problem with the releasing as well Because I was having a small issue with the interlocking where it would sometimes release the Locomotive at the same time as it would release it would allow a train in so now of course if that's set it won't actually allow the other system to go off, which has made it a lot more safer. And over here, uh, we are detect. We have well over here. This piece here, we detect if there is currently something on this line, and we won't allow something. Uh, won't allow anything else to go in there. When something leaves, is now when we reset the variable. So we're still using this to determine what the train number is. But we won't let anything in until it leaves here or here. And that's controlling this little guy here. So he won't allow something to go in, both based on the block signal, but also if the computer gets turned off. So if we go over to here and we go quit, it will no longer let anything in. So because what was happening, of course, is the train might get to here we turn the computer off and it wouldn't get the bottom color or wouldn't get the top color and then we just get confused. So now of course it won't, if the train's not running, it won't let anything go and get in. Um, and so that's just controlling down here once again, it's just, that's the magenta line. And it's also of course got the check to make sure that there's nothing on this track. Just in case for whatever reason something gets on there, it's a really a protection so we don't have big explosions. So that's the basic of what's there. Uh, if we go into here, now I'm planning on moving this configuration into a separate location, maybe a GUI or something, but we could say, okay, let's uh, make one water view line and maybe three charcoal hills. Not that we have room for that. And you'll see it when it comes, when the trains come through, 
So that was one of the water view lines, which is now changed to be charcoal. So we've now got three lines in there. This guy should stay the same. Because we've got two of those. And that guy should stay as well. So that lets us do that. We can also call it, uh, we can also go in and decrease the number of trains. So if we go in and we said, okay, we want to have one charcoal light, a train. Should let this guy come in. So it sends it around there, it'll reset it, and it goes back into the depot. Uh, there should be another one somewhere up here. Here comes one now. I'm pretty sure this is the only one on the track. Keeping track of all, okay. We'll just wait for that one to finish. And then if we go into here, we'll say, okay, I want to have three of those. And now, of course, it should release some more trains to meet the demand of requirement for Xmas or Christmas. It does have a small problem keeping up. There we go, so it's releasing another one in order to get it. This one here should become Xmas when it comes around. Xmas, cool. Sometimes there can be a bit of a delay when it's sitting there. I think that's something else to do with the world though. Uh, so we'll exit out of this one here as well. last thing we'll do is we'll set them all to zero which will return them all to the depot we'll go into there and he'll be ready to use same with that guy I think that's all the trains returning in now. Cool. That code works. So I think that's going to do it for this episode. Obviously having locomotives going around by themselves isn't really that helpful. So in a future episode, they'll be given carriages. And then they can go off and do their task. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the episode here. If you're new to the channel and like trains, open computers, any of that stuff, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But otherwise... Have a great day, and see ya! So we'll place these along here. They should all queue up after each other. Cool. Currently, of course, we have a train waiting here, so we'll just send this guy on its way. Whoops. Okay, not what I want it either. Just had a fatal accident there.